Hello, builders. Welcome to the Build Your Success podcast today. We hope you're building a team, building a business, building a career, whatever you're working on or towards. We want to be part of that journey. We do that through our training, coaching, and speaking, but we also do that with our special guests of the podcast. I'm excited today to have Tom Swab on the podcast. Tom, <clears throat> excuse me, believes the best things in life come from conversations. It's these powerful, sometimes awkward conversations that propel us where we from where we are personally and professionally to where we dream of being. As an entrepreneur, engineer, Navy veteran, and nuclear propulsion plant operator, Tom thinks differently. Tough-minded, skeptical, sometimes even cantankerous, but always technically competent and always thinking, what if? So Tom, first of all, thank you for your service to our country. And uh, yeah, I, I love this, uh, the, the, this bio here. It's kind of in, in, interesting. and We want to hear more about that. Well, Brian, thank you for having me here, and uh, also thank you for paying my for my education. Right uh, to all the taxpayers, I was a uh, a Midwestern kid that never been more than hundred miles from his home. Uh, joined the Navy, I went to the Naval Academy, and really got to see the world and uh, opened my eyes and, and changed my world for the better. Oh, that's exciting, Tom. That's and thank you again for what you've done. And I agree with you. It's it's such a, a, a training platform that the military offers to our country and to individuals. I've met a lot of great leaders that have military backgrounds. Let's get to our question for our podcast that we like to ask all of our guests. What does leadership and being a leader mean to Tom Swab? It's setting the right example, right? Is are you somebody that people would want to follow? Right. Um, and if they're not following you, you're not a leader. So that's one of the things that I always ask myself in that litmus test of, am I setting a good example? Would people want to follow me? Do, do I want to follow me at this point? And, um, uh, that that's, that's the core. I mean, the Naval Academy is basically a leadership school that teaches engineering too. Um, and that's one of the big things I got. That's, that's amazing. Well, in your application, I learned, I've seen a lot about communication and you're, you encourage people about doing podcasts. You're, you're the interview valet CEO. So I want to ask you some questions about that around these, these uh, ideas that you have. One of the things you said here, and I love it. I mean, hey, podcasts are about conversations. You said it's time to stop canned emails and automated funnels and have real conversation. How would you encourage our listeners to start those conversations? What? Think about it in your own life. The best things in life, your best customers, your best partners, your best employees, everything that you've built, did that come through a funnel or did it come through a conversation, right? Now, it, automation, it may have helped that, right? But it started with a conversation somewhere. And I think uh, today, if you want to call it with COVID where we're, we're disconnected, um, where it's the idea, I'll just build a funnel. You know, that lie that you're just one funnel away. No, you're not. You're one conversation away. And sometimes those conversations can be awkward. Sometimes they can be fun, but a real conversation is always powerful. That is so true. I have learned so much from being a podcast host that how important conversation is and building these relationships. In fact, uh, I had no idea when I began this podcast two years ago, it would lead to a book. And we, we've got the Voices for Leadership book with 40 authors. Many of those were, were guests on the podcast. And that led to some, some amazing ideas. It led to this question, what does leadership and being a leader mean to you? And then I thought of that and thought, well, let me let them write this out in their voice. And I've just been amazed at how making these connections and, and learning from others has has helped me, but also allowed me to help thousands of other people through through the podcast. Well, and it's like that idea of that relationships are the ultimate currency. And how do you build relationships? It's through conversations, through experiences. And, um, you know, that exposure brings all kinds of opportunity and things that you could never even think about. Yeah, it's it's such a, and in your world, it's a, it's a nucleus. It, it's this power that comes from within of these conversations and, and how we can help each other. It's, it's overwhelming to start with, but then it starts to just really snowball and, and help build others. So it's great. One of the things you put here in your application, you said email is a great way to share information, but not always the best way to communicate. I love this because you know, sometimes we can't see the tone in an email. 
we, we completely misread the other person's ideas. So, so let's dive into that a little bit, unpack that for the listeners. All right. I are engineer, right? So I am not the best communicator, especially in writing. In fact, my team knows that if they get an email that doesn't have a typo in it, it's probably like a phishing email or something. And so many of my emails, I just record a quick loom because it's easier for me. I can, I can explain it. They can understand me. Um, you know, there's certain emails that are for documentation, right? Those I'll type out, put through there. But if I'm just trying to communicate something to me, it's just much quicker like, like loom. Right. Um, I think it's a, I've got the paid version, but there's a free version. You know, I can click it, record a quick video, email it to somebody, text it to somebody. It's such a richer communication, right? You're face to face with someone. They can see you. Um, they can see, uh, they can see, sense your heart. And even, you know, there, I've never had a typo in a video. So to me, um, trying to get as much of a rich communication in no matter what I do. And I also, am, you know, remind myself and my team, you know, if, if you're not connecting over an email, replying with another email is probably not going to help it, right? Here's an old, old school idea. Pick up the phone, um, call them or say, can we jump on a Zoom call for, for two minutes, you know, uh, another thing I, I, I joke and I remind myself that sometimes peace and clarity come at the other side of an awkward 10 minute conversation, right? So let's have that conversation and let's both figure out where we are with this. That is amazing advice. I, I tell clients a lot of times, hey, let's stop the email war and let's let's have a real community. So my background, you know, I've been in contracting for 28 years and there's a lot of difficult conversations but, but sometimes, you know, emails can set like a defensive tone and then somebody goes on offense. It's back and forth. And it's like, okay, now it's time to pick up the phone, have a real conversation and let these folks know where we stand instead of just trying to create a war with each other. And, and uh, technology is wonderful, but it can also hurt us, right? How many times have we sent an email and then there's an autocorrect in it, right? My my wife sends me a text. I love you, Tim. Uh, I could I could be really insulted and say, "Who's this Tim guy?" Right? But I I know it's probably well. I'm telling myself it's an autocorrect. Well, that's that's true. In fact, I've had uh, my text to talk, and so you know, I, verbally I speak Southern is what I actually speak, and that text to talk sometimes will will translate into things the words I don't use. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to be careful. Look, read it before I send it out. You know, another thing that I, when you talk about the email communication, you know, I'm a personality guy. I, I like to learn about people's personalities and behavior styles and disc. And, and you can't do that sometimes in the written form. And, and I think that we just lose a lot of, you know, inflection, what people are trying to get across. And then we, sometimes we misperceive what they're trying to say. So I think, I love the fact you said that email is a great way to share information. I think that's a nugget that our listeners need to take away today. Write that down and, and use other forms of communication when you really want to get your point across, when you want to have a discussion, a conversation. So here we are on a podcast. I mean, you are, you're the guru here, the interview valet. You've got something here that says why podcast interviews convert 25 times better than blogs. Here we go again. So you got the written form of a blog that has done really well in our industry and, and for sales and things. But you're, you're telling us that the podcast interviews convert 25 times better. I'd love to hear the statistics behind that. Yeah. And you'll hear this statistic quoted many times, and most of the time it's quoted wrong. It was written up by HubSpot on, based on data that we did years ago. It means that when they go to your site from a site visitor to a lead, a podcast will convert 25%, 50% right in there. A blog is typically 1% to 2%. And it re originally when I saw that and I saw the data, I'm like, no, this can't be. And the more we tested it and refined it and thought about it, it's like, well, of course, right? If I go to a blog, I, I, I click on the blog, I, I, I skim it really quick, and down at the bottom, you know, there's a, a call to action or a form. A good blog will convert about 1% to 2%. You sort of ex expect that, right? There's no 
commitment. Um, they're just sort of t- dipping their toe in the water. If somebody listens to you on a podcast interview and they've listened for 30 or 45 minutes, they've already self-selected, right? They've either turned you up or turned you off. If, if they've turned you off, that's fine. They're probably not a good client, right? So if they listen to a podcast, go to your website. We've seen conversion rates upwards of the 90%, right? Where they're going there for a purpose. They're signing up for something. They, they want to talk with you. They want to get in your, in your orbit there. And so once again, I think it's just sort of that richment of the, con- the conversation. And, you know, at the end of the day, you know, I don't want more leads, right? A lot of people will say, oh, I want more leads. Why? Right? You can't, you can't eat a Facebook like, uh, you can't tell the bank how many leads you have and you're not really helping anybody with a lead, right? Once they become a customer and they're giving you money, then they're saying you are helping me here. So I always tell people, why don't you focus on getting better leads instead of just more leads? Why don't you focus on getting better customers than just more customers? And podcast interviews and podcasts can help you do that. Wow, Tom, that's great. As a podcast listener and a podcast host, I do feel like when I listen to someone, as you said, turn them up or turn them off. I I love that statement. But I do feel like I know someone after I've listened to our listeners today will know more about Tom Swab than they would have if they picked up and read a blog or something like that. They get to hear you. They get to see you if they're watching this on YouTube. And I think it does help. I I, I can just amazing how this 25 times better and and the way you back it up and reinforce it. uh, Pay attention to that. You know, listen, and hey, if you got a voice and you have a message, there's someone out there that wants to listen to you. Uh, podcasting is still fairly new as far as uh, number of users and number of providers, and it's got a long way to go. So if you have a voice, you have a message, you know, this it's not very hard to do because Brian can do it. So uh, I call it Brian proof, but definitely uh, podcasting and, and getting on interviews is definitely going to help, you know, transform your life really is the way I look at it. So that leads into, you know, we have a lot of entrepreneurs that, that listen to this podcast and, and you have a question here that for individuals, have you ever thought your digital marketing might be actually hurting your business? Wow. That you're not breaking through the noise, you're adding to it. Unpack that one for us, Tom. I'd love to hear that. Uh, the first time I heard this idea uh, came from a book called Click Sand by Bill Troy. The the subtitle of it is How Digital Marketing is Ruining Your Business. And the more I started to think about that, it's like, it's so true. Is it insulating us from our customers or is it connecting us with our customers? And and often it just insulates it. Uh, You you think about it, um, does the marketing you do, is it consistent with your brand? Um, we're working with one uh, client right now, um, and they've got an app that connects people and with real conversations. They don't do social media. And I said, well, why is that? And he says, it's not consistent with who we are, right? Um, I talked with another client that came to us, and um, I said, well, why do you want to do podcast interviews? And he said, because I see what other people are doing. I wouldn't buy from them, and my customers wouldn't buy from, from that. And I said, explain that to me. He's like, I'm a professional. I work with other professionals. He said, I'm not on Facebook all the time, right? And if I was, I'm not going to hire somebody just because they had that Facebook ad. He's like, it's like, are you going to hire the lawyer that's got his advertisement over the urinal? Are you going to hire the cardiac surgeon that has the, um, uh, the, the park bench with his picture on it? He's like, no, it's not consistent with that. So, um, the idea of having marketing, having messages that are consistent with your brand and consistent with who you're talking to. Wow. Hey, repeat that title again. That's that's such a great title. Yeah, it's it's a great book. It's called Click Sand, like quicksand, but yeah. Click Sand is by Bill Troy out of Ohio. Um uh, click sand, how digital marketing is ruining your business. Uh, you'll read that book as a business owner and look at marketing differently. Uh, it came out, uh, quite a few years ago. I think he was the first sort of canary in the coal mine. Um, and, uh, he got a little bit of pushback from it, but, uh, as time goes on, I think more people read that and go, this makes a whole lot of sense. 
It, it really does. And then think of that analogy of the quicksand, quicksand, getting trapped in that likes and and followings and going viral and all those things. As you alluded to, that doesn't that doesn't go to the bank very well. And so you may have one client that you get on a podcast that's worth way more to you than a hundred likes. Very much so. And if you're the what we learned for selling one and two dollar items does not scale up to relationships and and big ticket items and long term engagements. And so I think it's it's wrong to say, well, it worked for them, it'll work for me. Uh, you know, um another thing he says in there that I love is big fish don't swim through funnels and whales don't click. Right. Do you think if you're trying to land a CEO uh, for a big um, construction contract for a big ongoing um, engagement, right, is he really going to go and buy your seven dollar tripwire product and then look at emails for the next, um, you know, three months before he signs up? No, he's too busy. If he hears you and he's like, yep, Brian is the answer to my prayers. He works with people like me. He helps people like me. I've got this pain. He just wants to get you on the phone and, and make it happen. Wow. That's just great advice. I'd love that. Well, speaking of books, Tom, you have a book. I'd love you to tell our listeners what, what the title of your book and then what they can find in that book. Yeah, it's called Podcast Guest Profits. How to Grow Your Business with a Targeted Interview Strategy. Now, I just want to say in here that uh, I'll give you a copy of the book, right? I'm not here to sell the book. I'm not here to promote it. Um, and with that, it really just came out of people asking me, well, how how do you do this, right? And, and thank you for putting that up there, Brian. Just go to interviewballet.com forward slash BYS for Build Your Success. You can get a free copy of the book there, right? If you're in the States, I'll mail it to you. If you're outside, I'll email it to you. But people were asking, well, how do you do this? And other people were like, well, it's a secret. It's a mystery, right? There's no secrets. There's no mysteries. What I learned in the Navy at taxpayer's expense was that everything is a system that can be refined, can be um, improved. And, you know, those people that say you can't explain it, that's because they don't understand it. Oh, it's basically just, I went in there and said, this is what we have learned. This is what we have learned from our clients. Here's the step-by-step -step recipe to get results. And some people will come back and say, well, do you have to follow all these steps? No, you're, you're a grown man or woman. You don't have to do anything, right? But I'll tell you, this is the recipe we know. And this is the repeatable experience you have if you follow these steps. And most people, uh, you know, there's some people that read the book and say, thank you so much. It it helped me. There's a lot of other people that are are typically our, our ideal clients that are like, yeah, I don't want to do all of this. I, I want to be the guest. You take care of the rest. And they, they read it and it's like, yeah, I get it. I understand it. I just want to be the guest. You take care of it. Amazing. You know, I hear when you're speaking of that, it's not one size fits all. And, and that's what I've learned with asking that signature question about leadership and why we had voices for leadership. It's it's not one size. Leadership isn't one size fits all. Marketing strategies are not one size fits all. Your unique blend. There are some common threads, but there are some different fabrics and there are some different colors and there are different things that that other people want. And, and my fabric may not fit everyone. That's one thing I had to learn early on with my podcast is I'm not for everyone, but I am for someone. And that's what I want to be sure we, we our guests, uh, not our guests, but our listeners understand is realize you can't be everything to everyone. That creates a real big mess for, for everyone. <laughs> and, so, And in your marketing too, right? What's the, um, the uh, quote from the Bible, right? Um, nobody likes, and I'm paraphrasing, right? Um, nobody likes warm water. Be cold or be hot or be spit out. Right. And so if you try to appeal to everybody, you'll appeal to no one. And if somebody listens to me and they're like, that guy's weird, you know, I could never see working with them. That's fine. Right. God love you. Take what's in the book, apply it yourself. Right. Uh, it doesn't mean you're bad or I'm bad, but we're just a bad fit. And that's fine. Right. Um, but I want to attract those people that are like, you know, he's a little bit quirky, but he makes sense. I want to work with them. You know, your marketing should attract the right ideal customers and repel those that you can't serve the best. 
Awesome, Tom. Well, we've reached that place in the show today. We've got to start wrapping things up. We'll definitely include that free book. Thanks for giving that to our listeners, this uh, book, the free book. You'll find that at interviewvalet.com forward slash BYS for Build Your Success. And uh, appreciate you giving that away. We're going to include that in the show notes. You can also find out more about Tom at interviewvalet.com and uh, just everything he's doing there. We appreciate you listening to the podcast today. Do me a favor, go to wherever you're listening to this podcast, leave us an honest review and rating, share this podcast with others. Tom's left dropped a lot of gold nuggets today that your friends and family need. Thanks for listening to the podcast today. Remember to build yourself and then build others.